Yo, 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 yo. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Elgo Runner. Welcome to my first video. Thanks for joining. All right, so basically, what I'm gonna do is learn TensorFlow. Okay, so last semester of my university, I took a deep learning course. I kind of went back and took a look at the material that we were reading and try to refresh my mind on some of the topics. And so today's video is gonna be about fiddling with TensorFlow. Okay, so this is the book that um, basically learned all the concepts from. Um, and again, I'm learning. So this is pretty much a video uh, of you guys watching me learn TensorFlow and fiddle with it. Okay, so today we are drinking Pistol Pete's 1888, all right? So, have you guys heard of, of Balmer's Peak? So, let's look that up. So basically, Balmer's Peak is a, a certain threshold of blood alcohol concentration that pretty much makes you a super, superhuman programmer pretty much. So we're gonna try to hit that peak. All right, so if you guys don't like the video, at least give me a like for this awesome Casio that I got here. Check this out. I'm try to have it on the link down below. Um, if not, just look it up, but pretty sweet. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve a regression, a linear regression problem. So if you guys aren't familiar with it, I'll go over it really quick. Basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna define um, a set of numbers as our inputs, right? That are gonna follow some kind of linear trend, right? So I'm gonna draw, draw this out for you guys. Oh, that's way too big. Okay, so this is our graph and these are our data. This is our data set. And if you're paying attention, it follows this linear trend, right? So what we're trying to do is we're gonna to try to find a line that best fits this trend here. So the line, as you might imagine, might look something like that, right? And so a linear model looks like this. Everybody's familiar with the Y equals MX plus B. But basically we got all our X's, we got our inputs, our features, and we're trying to solve for the most optimal values for M and B just slope and y-intercept. So that's what we're gonna try to do here in TensorFlow. So we're gonna go ahead and write everything in Colab. So we're gonna do our important imports. We're gonna do import NumPy as MP. We're gonna import uh, matplot lib pyplot so that we can see all our cool graphs. And then finally, we're gonna work on TensorFlow. Cool. All right. So, base and just so that we can set this straight, let's take a look at the version number here because we got TensorFlow TensorFlow 2.0. Um, and we're taking a look at 1.14. Let me take a look really quick. Just make sure, yeah, that I'm recording. Okay. Cool. So. First, what we want to do is we're going to define some hyperparameters. These are variables that we're going to use so that our model can be tweaked. So first, we're going to define our learning rate equal to 0.1. And then we're going to define epochs. So epochs is basically um, the number of iterations that it goes through this optimization. But as I said, I'm relearning this stuff. so. I'll I'm not the best at, at explaining it right now. So that's what we're gonna do. And then let's go ahead and define the number of samples that we're gonna have in this data set as N. So we'll go ahead and we'll uh, put in 30, okay? So let's go for a line that has a slope of, of 0 0.5 and a y-intercept of five. Let's define our data set now. So we're gonna use NumPy's length space and then we're gonna go from one to 20 with 30 samples. So N being samples. And then 
we're gonna add some noise to it so that we can kind of get um, scattered points throughout this plot. So we're gonna define x noise equals np random dot uniform, and then we're gonna go from negative three to three, negative three to three, three with n number of samples, and then we're gonna append that noise to our x values here. So x equals x plus. Um, X noise. Okay, we got the, our data set defined now. Let's go for our Y values here. So Y equals M times X plus B, right? Right. But let's add some noise to it just so we can have some fun with some randomness, right? So we're gonna do the same thing, Y noise equals this thing here with n number of samples. And we're gonna add that to our, our model here, our values. So Y noise. All right, let's plot this and see how it looks. So plt dot scatter X and Y. Take a look. All right, you got an error. And that's because I have line space instead of line space. Okay. And then also, what? PLT? Ah, there we go. PLT, like that, like that. Right? Okay, cool. So there you have it. We got a random points, right? Um, as in, in our data set that follow some kind of particular linear regression, right? And so what we're trying to find is this, the optimal line or the best fitting line to this data set or this trend here. How TensorFlow works is that we have to define a graph before we can execute anything. So the graph is pretty much like, it's the, the model with all the variables, all the computation that we have to set up before we can run it. So let's do that. Let's have values of X equals uh, capital X, which will be our inputs or features. And we'll place that in the placeholder so that later on and when we're, whenever we're running this computation, we can feed the values of X onto, onto these variables as we're doing the optimization here. So TF um, float 32. We're going to have the same thing for Y, the, the Y values. And then we'll just find this as capital Y. And then on to our variables, which is our W, our weights, which is our slope, um, TF variable, because this is going to be the value that we're trying to optimize or we're trying to find. And we'll, we'll set that up to be some kind of random value. Um, and, and you know what, let's set our M to be like 2.5, all right, whatever that works, okay, Oops. okay, so, um, our weight equals to, let's set this to be like 1.23, 1. yeah, and then our bias, another value that we're trying to try to optimize for um, to be like 3.42. Um, you know, they're just randomly initiated there. Next, we're gonna define our Y model. Okay, so that is our X or our W times X plus B, right? Everybody knows that. Okay, now how do we optimize for this? Well, we can find we can use a cost function or an error function. And let me write this out before I start explaining things here. Um, hopefully, can you hopefully I have the camera angles correctly? So TF um, reduce some TF square Y model Y model minus Y. Of 
this. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, so we have a cost function. And basically what the cost function is, is we have these points, right? And we're trying to get this line. Basically what we're doing in that, in that function is we're measuring how far these points are to this line, right? And what we want is some kind of value that is as close to zero as possible, right? Which is not gonna be zero because as you can see, these are, are all over the place, right? They are, or, but you know, at a specific trend to this line, right? So what we're doing is we're measuring the distance or the deviation between this line and we're getting um, the the summation of or the the mean, the average, right, of all those little tiny errors that are in in um, our data set. So this is actually called the mean squared error um, cost function here. So how do we optimize it so that we can get um, as close to zero as possible? So we use um, TensorFlow's optimizers, right? So we we'll use TF train dot, and we'll, we're going to use gradient descent. Um, hopefully, uh, I'll make a video uh, about what gradient descent is and how it works later on. So we're going to go ahead and input our le learning rate that defined that we defined up above, which is one of our hyperparameters. So let's see. And what we're what what are we trying to do with this optimizer? Well, we're trying to minimize the error, right? So. That's gonna happen in our training, uh, our training phase, which is let's let's uh, define that. So we're trying to minimize the error, right? Next, we have to initialize the variables that we defined up there. So we're gonna use tf global variable initializer. That should be good to go. Yeah. All right. Now, time for the fun part is the actual computation. So we're going to use a session. Hold on, puppy. I'll be there, okay? I love you. All right, we're going to define this. We're going to computate this graph here. So with tensorflow.compat.v1.session assess, so first we have to run uh, the initializer. I think it probably just like allocates memory or something. I'm not too sure, but let's do this. Sass run init. Not init, just does the global variable initializer function. Now, time for the optimization. So we're gonna go through our epochs. And like I said, epochs is sort of like the, the, the number of cycles that you go through. Um, to get this optimization going. So for epoch in epochs, and we're gonna feed in our X and Y values to this model here. So I, J, and zip, X and Y. And we're gonna run the training. So sass.run train and we're gonna go ahead and feed those values in. So feed dick, it, 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 you feed it off of a dictionary. So we want our X's um, to be fed in the X's, the, the inputs, the I's, and then Y, the J. All right, so we should be good on that part. We're gonna do the optimizations. And now after it does the optimizations, we wanna store the, um, the B and M um, values, so, or their weights and bias, or weight and bias. So mod B, mod, mod M and mod B equal to B sess dot run. Mm. And that is our weight and our bias. Okay, so let's start training. That's a hundred epochs, right? So hundred cycles. All right, we get an error. What's up? All right. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. Train, feed, dict, x. Thank you. 
Oh, okay. I forgot uh, the parentheses to, you know, to. We call this function. This is a this is a, a, a function here. All right. Start. Ah. What else? And then. Oh, for epoch in range. All right, uh, let's do that optimization again, but let's uh, print out the values after it runs. Oh, you know what, we'll just run it here. So print mod M mod B, see what we get. Pretty good. So. For our slope, we got 2.68. And then for our y-intercept, our b, we got 3.69. Oh, we were sort of aiming for, or not really aiming for, but it was kind of modeled after this. It, we're going for 2.5 as the slope and, and five as as the b, right? But, I mean, let's, let's see how it looks like, right, in our graph. So let's compare that. So let's do, so our y model, equals mod m times our x values plus our mod b and that's that's the line that that we optimize to fit for these um this 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 trend here so let's go ahead and plot our 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 points again our our data set and then we're gonna go ahead and graph the actual line that we just optimized for. So mm, plot and then X and then Y mod. You guys ready? That's cool. I mean, take a look at that. I mean, it, it fits the line pretty, pretty good. Thank you guys for watching. The next videos, I'm gonna go for a uh, simple feed-forward neural network, probably like the um, the classic um, classification using the MNEST dataset. So stay tuned for that. Please subscribe and like. Hopefully, I'll be posting on this channel uh, pretty uh, pretty frequent, maybe with some coding challenges, uh, maybe some tutorials and stuff like this. So um, stick around. Thank you guys for watching. You guys have a good one.